We're going to look at limits at infinity in two parts. So let's get started. What do we mean by that? When I look at a limit at infinity, what we're saying is we're looking at what happens to my function values as x approaches either positive or negative infinity. So we want to see, does that limit exist? Now remember, a limit exists if I go towards a number. So let's look at this sketch. It's e always easier to see it with a sketch before we look at it algebraically. If I look at the sketch of 1 over x squared, I can see that the limit as x approaches infinity of this function. This function gets closer and closer to that x-axis. It never gets there, but as my values of x get larger and larger, 1 over x gets closer and closer to 0. never gets to 0, but it gets closer and closer to 0. So that limit value is 0. I've got a horizontal asymptote there at x equal to 0. Similarly, the limit as x approaches minus infinity of this function is 0, because as x gets very, very small, those values go towards 0. So let's just take a look at it algebraically. If I've got 1 over x squared, what you need to notice is that as I have a denominator that gets larger and larger and larger, if it becomes a 1,000, a million, 10 million, 100 million, and so on, as this denominator gets larger and larger, this whole fraction goes towards 0. And we're going to use that when we try and find these limits at infinity algebraically. So let's take a look. x squared, well, yet again, we can look at a sketch. That one's easy to draw. We see that as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, the values of x squared go towards infinity. They just get bigger and bigger and bigger, so they do not approach a specific number. So we look at the limit as x approaches to either plus or minus infinity. We're just going to do them together of this function. It goes towards infinity, so that limit does not exist because it goes towards infinity. What about the cubic function? Now, I'm not, I don't feel like sketching the whole cubic function, but we know how cubic functions behave, so we know it's going to go in that direction and in that direction. As x goes to positive infinity, this is going to negative and function is going to negative infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, this function is going to positive infinity. Now, what happens in the middle here, I'm not interested in because I'm looking at what happens as the limits go to infinity. So yet again, this limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity does not exist because this function goes towards positive and negative infinity. So for the sake of this exercise, we're not interested in where it's going. When I want to sketch this function, it helps to know whether I'm going to positive or negative infinity. But if I'm simply looking for limit values, I can say that it doesn't exist because it doesn't go towards a specific number. It goes to either positive or negative infinity. And that's what we're going to find with all polynomials. Polynomials go off into positive and negative infinity, so those limits do not exist. But rational functions is what we're looking at. So let's look at this one. We've got a sketch there, x minus 3 over x. This function has an asymptote here where x is equal to 1. So if we had to read off the limit value, now we're going to do it algebraically, but let's just see where we're headed. As x goes to positive infinity, these y values get very close to 1. Smaller than 1, but it gets closer and closer to 1. Similarly, as x goes to negative infinity, my y values get closer and closer to 1. That's my horizontal asymptote. So we're expecting to get to 1. Now how are we going to deal with that algebraically? Well, it's a little technique. What we do is we change the format of this function. We don't change the function, just the way it's written. Because we know we can multiply a function and the numerator and denominator with the same thing. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator with 1 over x. Now, I can do that because I'm looking at x values going towards infinity. So we're not looking at what happens where x is equal to 0, so we can do that. What's going to happen then is x is going to infinity. If I multiply my numerator and my denominator with 1 over x, and I'll show you why I chose 1 over x, I'll get 1 minus 3 over x divided by 1. Now, the reason I chose 1 over x, my highest exponent here was 1. So what I'm ending up with is a limit. x is going to infinity, so it's getting very, very large. So what is going to happen? 1 is just a constant, but this 3 over x portion, as x gets very, very big, 3 over x goes towards 0. So this limit 
goes towards 1 minus 0 over 1, which is just the value 1. Because as x gets very large, this portion goes towards 0. So my limit goes to 1, and our sketch shows that. Same for negative infinity. Let's look at this example. I've got a function here. Yet again, if I look at the sketch, as x goes to positive and negative infinity, I've got a horizontal asymptote to 2. So how can I do this algebraically? Because I know as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, this function value goes to 2. So we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator with 1 over x squared. And yet again, it's pretty legal to do because x is not going to 0, x is going to infinity. So what we can say, that will be the same as the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 divided by 1 minus 4 over x squared. And yet again, this fraction, as x goes to infinity, 4 over x squared goes towards 0. So that limit value is just 2 divided by 1 minus 0, which is 2, which is the horizontal asymptote. And that's how we can find our asymptotes too. But here we started with the sketch and we try to see how we can get there.